right. Thanks. Adios. Hey, Axel. What a great car, isn't it? Wow, it's such a beautiful ride. Yeah, it's yeah. a wonderful color and it's a wonderful car. Mercedes SL manufacturing year 68. Wow. So Axel, what are we actually doing here today? So we talk about the challenges of the e-mobility for the car industry as well as for the consumers uh -huh. and the suppliers, of course. And we talk about change of behavior. Speaking of e-mobility, I think we can head over to our next ride. What yeah, do you say? Let's go. Okay. So Axel, you stepped out of this beautiful classic car just a few seconds ago, and now we're heading over to the newest generation of electric cars here. You know, there's this tremendous development. What about the development of Trelleborg Ceiling Solutions? Yeah, also Trelleborg Ceiling Solutions went through a huge development over these years. Uh -huh. So it started with a position as an O-ring supplier, mm -hmm. distributing O-rings from Asia into the European industry. Mm -hmm. And now we are a development partner for the automotive industry and other industries. So not only O-rings, but also very complex engineered molded parts. Uh, what do you say? Is it time for a road trip? Absolutely. Let's get into the future. Okay. So Matthias, how does it feel? It feels amazing, to be honest. You know, we're sitting here in this cutting edge piece of technology. And uh, for me, it's actually the first ride in an electric car. And it's pretty impressive, especially keeping in mind that we, you know, we just saw the classic car and um, that huge development to these, you know, brand new electric cars. Yep. That's just uh, amazing. And what about the materials and the processes? I'm sure there's a lot you can share about that. Materials is an interesting topic since a lot of materials were well known or are well known over decades. Mm -hmm. uh, these materials changed in their performance level pretty much. Mm -hmm. So if you think about the FKM mm -hmm. material family, so we developed special materials for the fuel injection systems. Mm -hmm. So these fuel injection systems are now operating on a very high pressure level. Mm -hmm. And our FKMs are able to seal these fuel injection systems to very low temperatures. Okay. And we were able to bring the level down from minus 30 degrees to minus 50 degrees Celsius, mm -hmm. so by 20 Kelvins, um, to be flexible still in these temperature levels. How about we talk about the uh, production processes? You know, I'm sure there's a lot to share to that end as well. Yeah, automation is the key word. Okay. So if we look back decades, then you can think of big presses like big waffle makers uh -huh. standing in this uh, production area, hundreds of people mm -hmm. deflashing the parts, hundreds of people inspecting these parts just manually, mm -hmm. so with fingers and eyes. Yeah. Uh, these days we have production cells which are closed, just material flows in mm -hmm. and the finished goods flow out. Interesting. And uh, I'm sure testing is a big part um, or a very important part also for our customers, right? Yeah, so in this production cells, you will find the injection molding machines. Uh -huh. uh, you will find uh, this robot assisted. Mm -hmm. So it means a robot would take the parts out of that mold, out of the press, mm -hmm. put it into inspection area. And this inspection area, there would be a camera inspection area. So cameras would do the job to uh -huh. uh, make sure that this this product is on the, on the highest possible quality level. Mm -hmm. And then the next step would be that this part is placed into the packaging label, labeling area okay. where it's uh, fully automated packaged, mm -hmm. labeled, and then it goes out to the customer. In this production cells, sometimes even a functional test takes place. So uh -huh. where uh, a leak test is performed for making sure that also the function of the seal is achieved. You know, we also touched upon the topic of noise and uh, vibration. What can you say about that? So we are leader of products for noise and vibration reduction. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore we can use these materials to reduce the noise level mm -hmm. from the inverter or the E-axle. There are vibrations you would recognize as noise in the passenger compartment. And this material is a polymer to metal material, mm -hmm. which can be applied on these parts 
and reduce the noise and vibration level significantly. So NVH products are the, the, one of the solutions to keep that noise level on a very low one. Mm -hmm. Matthias, now mm -hmm. look at the speed. Okay, I see 95, 6, 7, 8, 9, 100. So not really, not really quick. Okay. But the E-axle mm -hmm. is turning now much quicker than the combustion engine. So if it turns quicker, it's, it's more complex to seal. You want to have a tight seal, you have the lip be pressed on the axle uh -huh. to keep the system tight, yep. so no leakages. Yep. Um, on the other side, you want to have not that much friction, so you don't want to lose energy by pressing a sealing lip on the axle. So we took a quick look at, you know, what what you're expecting in the near future. What would you say does the current market um, look like or the market situation? Usually, uh, you would expect that the consumer says, mm -hmm. uh, what, do you, what, what do I want? Yeah, you know, the and then the so. common fix is, yeah, that's what I produce, yeah. you know. Uh, but here it's, it's different, you know. So we see that it's rather a, a push market than a pull market. Uh -huh. So um, the, the car manufacturer, has uh, now to deal with uh, very strict emission laws, mm -hmm. has to deal with uh, high penalties they have to pay yep. if they don't uh, comply with these average fuel consumptions mm -hmm. uh, or CO2 uh, emission limits. So they target the international markets mm -hmm. and uh, they care about zero emission cars. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only way to do that right now is to produce a battery electric vehicle. That's the charging port. And I remember when I did that the first time, uh -huh. uh, six years ago, it was uh, a rainy weather mm -hmm. and it was uh, outside of the garage. Uh -huh. And I went outside and then during the plugging in of that uh, ca cable, I thought, well, hopefully the, the engineer did a good job, you know? <laughs> so if you, if, you're, if you work with this charging cable in this high voltage environment, then you want to be safe that the right material was chosen, that it's totally safe and easy for the, for the consumer. And uh, obviously, he did yeah. a good job. Uh, but um, also for the future, this is of course one of the leading um, topics that we have to work with. Let's go ahead and check it out, huh? Yeah, absolutely. So let's take the charging cable uh -huh. and plug it in. Now that the car is charging, what is happening exactly in this moment? So we have now a lot of energy going into the car. And this is a very efficient process, but nevertheless, there is an energy loss. And this energy loss is creating heat. Okay. And what about this heat and the energy loss? How is that managed, actually? Yeah, that's managing is really the right, the right word for that. So it's about thermal managing. Okay. So thermal management means all these parts of that electric powertrain, like the battery, the inverter, and also the electric uh, engine yeah. needs to stay in a certain temperature window to, keep, to give the, the right performance to the car. Where do ceiling solutions actually come into play? Yeah, it's in pumps, okay. it's in connectors, and it's also in uh, valves. Uh -huh. And these valves are very interesting products. Okay, and what's so special about the valves? So this valve has to generate the different coolant flows to these different applications, like inverter I mentioned before, as yeah. well as the battery and the electric engine. And especially the battery has just a certain temperature window where it works in a perfect mode. Okay, sounds good. So it all has to be precisely managed there and that's where the sealing solutions can help. Yeah, the sealing in this uh, valve is a very complex part. It's an insert out of different materials. It's uh -huh. a multi-component part. Yeah. And uh, there is PDFE in it, plastic, and EPDM um, especially mixed to be, um, to be the right material for uh, coolant media all over the world. And I imagine, you know, connectivity is always a big topic nowadays. Um, what about the phone? I think there's something we can show too, right? Yes, huh? absolutely. Yeah. We have um, a special material uh -huh. that's there to um, support the inductive charging. 
So uh -huh. you put your smartphone there, it's charged without any cables. And that's a special material, liquid silicon rubber, uh -huh. which uh, fits the purpose perfectly. I'm assuming it probably comes in all sorts of sizes and shapes, right? So not only liquid silicon rubber, but also other materials. Okay. Sometimes the design of the parts is the way that it's really small. Okay. So we call it micro molding. Ah, okay. And um, w what that means is that uh, we can achieve a very very low weight yeah. of mm -hmm. the part so it's around 0 0.02 grams wow. okay. and the size is below 0 0.5 millimeters so very very small parts so Matthias what a great road trip absolutely thanks a lot Axel yeah, for thanks for your time what do you say? I mean, we're out here, we have this Amazing. beautiful view, right? Uh, I think it's time to take an outlook into the future, right? The future of mobility. We expect that the individual mobility will play the dominant role also in the future. So we want to be part of these trends. We want to recognize these trends also in the future. So what we have done also until now. Um, based on that, that means that if mobility is dominant topic, then we want to be part of this um, sustainable sustainability move to uh, reduce footprint towards the environment. Okay, I think sustainability here is the key word that you just mentioned, which is also closely linked, obviously, to responsibility. Uh, how would you say do we as Trelleborg Ceiling Solutions, uh, how do we live that spirit? Now, we have several group-wide globally initiatives. Mm -hmm. So it's about reducing waste, it's about reducing energy consumption, but it's also about changing the energy source to renewable energies. And finally, of course, we change our car fleet to zero emission vehicles. So that kind of sounds to me like protecting the planet, right? Yeah, that's almost protecting the planet. It's also <laughs> protecting, of course, employees, mm -hmm. families, but it's, yeah, protecting the planet. <laughs>